A federal judge has ruled against a group of religious extremists seeking to prevent their children from learning about the existence of gay and trans people. Just literally. Uh, in May, several Muslim, Jewish, and Christian families sued Montgomery County Public Schools School District in the state of Maryland, arguing that they should have the ability to pull their children out of lessons that may involve LGBTQ plus topics. Uh, now, the Washington Post reported the lawsuit alleged that the use of LGBTQ plus storybooks, it, it, you know, basically a story that may involve a gay character or a trans character, forces religious parents to either compromise on their beliefs or take their children out of the public school system, to which I say, no, you don't actually have to do either. Uh, now, Judge Deborah Boardman of the U.S. District Court for Maryland in Greenbelt did not buy that argument either and ruled that the parents failed to show that the schools not having an opt-out policy in these specific lessons would result in the indoctrination of their children or otherwise coerce their children to violate or change their religious beliefs. Again, we're, we're talking about basically uh, hearing the sto uh, a, a story of a, a, of a gay or trans child. They believe that that's indoctrination and coercion into violating or changing their religious beliefs. That's, that's their argument. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's super weak. It, look, if, you're, if your religious beliefs are so fragile that the mere mention of a gay or trans person is enough to shatter it into a million pieces, then maybe those beliefs deserve to be shattered because they seem to be on pretty weak ground, okay? They're going to gonna have some real problems when they get out into the real world, you know, and hear about these things. I know, crazy, right? Uh, that said, I, I, the reason that I call the, uh, these people extremists is because there are plenty of Christians, Muslims, and Jews who are totally fine in accepting of gay and trans people. I know. Crazy, right? But it's true. It's true. And I find it super ironic that they're claiming that this is that this is indoctrination when literally the entire point of organized religion is to indoctrinate people. That, that's the mission of the Christian church. It, again, when they come out and they say, we need to save the souls of the wicked. What do you think that is? That's indoctrination. Your, your whole purpose is to indoctrinate people. <laughs> Again, like, oh, oh, oh. so uh, basically if I get like a, because I, I, you know, I live in a, a kind of rural area, right? Uh, not a big, not a big town. And every once in a while I'll get these mailers from these Christian organizations, these churches, whatever. Can I just go and be like, oh my God, indoctrination. They're trying to indoctrinate me by putting a mailer in. Actually, I could because that's the whole point. But I don't because my non-beliefs in this case, as somebody who's atheist, um, they're not so fragile as to be shattered by the existence of a church. But apparently these people, very, very, very fragile. Very fragile. Uh, now, let me get back to the judge here because this is uh, great. Uh, again, Judge Deborah Boardman Taking a, you know, taking a two by four to their argument here, saying uh, that with or without the right to opt out, parents remain free to pursue their sacred obligations to instruct their children in their face, even if their children's exposure to religiously offensive ideas makes the parents' efforts less likely to succeed. That does not amount to a government imposed burden on their religious exercise. Yes. So, uh, here's the thing. Parents, these parents wanted to be lazy. That's it. They they didn't want to be parents. They didn't actually want to have to explain to their children about LGBTQ plus topics. Why is that? I mean, I, I don't know. You'd have to ask that. I guess. Uh, but I can, I can't, I can make some guesses, right? Uh, I can make some guesses as to why they're attempting to hide their children from the reality of the world because it's not like these people don't exist. They do exist. And it's actually not very difficult to explain a gay person or a trans person. I, I know, I know, but they think it is. Um, here's what I believe it, it really comes down to though. They know that their beliefs about gay and trans people are deeply bigoted and hateful, okay? And I don't think they wanna, they wanna have to explain why you should hate this gay person or why you should hate this trans person. 
okay? Especially when, again, when you read a story that actually, I don't know, humanizes them because they're humans, they're people, uh, that you have to go and you have to counter that narrative and you actually have to promote hatred because that's ultimately what the parents are doing. They're, I don't want to have to do that. I don't want to have to explain why being a bigot is good. You should, you should just not be exposed to that at all, you know, uh, in, in the real world. Uh, it, 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 and, and I should get to just control everything, the narrative here, and you should just naturally become a bigot like I was. No, that's not how it works. Now, the books that the parents didn't want their kids to hear, which, by the way, were not mandatory reading in every classroom, uh, were these. One of them was Love Violent, a story about a girl who develops a crush on her classmate, and My Rainbow, the tale of a mom who makes a colorful wig for, he tra for her transgender daughter. Ooh. Whoa, so terrible, right? So terrible, so terrible. In fact, look, here's the thing. The school has already categorized those books as age and developmentally appropriate. So you can't go and, and claim, oh, it's uh, not good for children, pornography, blah, blah, blah. No, no. So having lost that argument, they say, well, we should just be able to, it's our religion's freedom to go and rip our kids out of the class if the teacher reads a book that happens to involve a gay person. Uh, now, look, Eric Baxter, an attorney representing the religious parents, uh, called Judge Wardman's decision, quote, wrong on multiple levels and said he plans to appeal it. I'm going to read you these uh, uh, posts that he put on the platform formerly known as Twitter. He said earlier this month, Beckett Law asked a federal judge to recognize parents' right to guide the religious upbringing of their children and restore the parents' ability to help their children on complex and sensitive issues. By the way, none of those things have ever been taken away. <laughs> Again, they're literally arguing, no, you shouldn't present opposing ideas to our own to then have to make us have to do, you know, what the parents have to do and, and actually have a nuanced discussion uh, about why we believe what we believe. Now, I don't want to have to do that because I'm lazy and I can't explain why uh, hatred is good. He then says, today the district court decided uh, parents have no right to, or no, to notice when extreme ideology is pushed on their elementary age children during story hour. Again, extreme ideology. Having a gay person exist uh, and acknowledging that they exist in a story. Oh, extreme. Extreme. With the new school year uh, beginning, the case is on a fast track to the Fourth Circuit of Court of Appeals. Beckett Law and the parents plan to appeal the decision. School board should let kids be kids and let parents parent, except that the parents are too lazy to want to parent. <laughs> uh, and part of being a child is, of course, uh, you know, discovering and learning new things. I know. Crazy, right? Um, children are entitled to enjoy a period of innocence and be guided by their own parents on how and when to approach the complex and sensitive issues being pushed by the school board. Okay, what what about telling people to go to hell or, or that they will go to hell, sorry, uh, is innocence? Uh, because that's exactly what religion pushes on you. At a very early age, you will be punished. The sinners will be, the wicked sinners shall be punished by an eternal lake of fire. You learn those things as a, as a Christian in certain churches, very, very young. What, what, what part of that is innocence? But that goes to the other thing where they link, uh, you know, basically preference uh, as, you know, uh, identity, again, being a transgender person uh, or, you know, being gay, whatever. They link it explicitly to sexual deviance. It's almost as if they believe that it's just a fetish and that it's just inherently sexual, which again, it's it's not. It actually has a lot of, uh, there's a lot of factors in, in being a gay or a trans person, LGBTQ+, uh, that actually don't involve sex at all. <laughs> but it, look, part of, the, part of the LGBTQIA, by the way, is asexual, which means they're not interested in sex whatsoever. So, I mean, again, they have no idea what they're talking about. And I think they prefer it that way. And it's just full of ignorance. Th that's all they are. No, that's it. Um, speaking of let children be, be children, right? Uh, well, here's what some of the uh, people on their side, the parents' side, that's, this is what they're up to these days. Take a look. You deserve hell. You deserve to 
leave the kids alone! Shut up. Time to repent of your sin. Time to repent of your sin. Give your life to Jesus Christ. Yeah, gee, I don't know. That sounds a lot like indoctrination there. Uh, give your life to Jesus Christ. Repent. Now, some of the stuff that you, these uh, demonstrators, by the way, I'm going to give you the context of where they were at. They were just literally at a high school blocking buses, okay, in Texas. Um, one of them said, if you had an abortion, you're going to hell because you were evil. Again, you're talking to teenagers at a high school here. Uh, another yelled that Jesus will judge the living and the dead. Uh, that's what he's going to do. I've already seen some transvestite. They don't even get it right. Uh, out here boohooing and crying. God's people will never comply with the devil's lies. So, I mean, that's uh, that's what they're talking about. Uh, but but they but they're saying you're you you gotta leave. Well, you gotta leave the kid. You gotta leave the kids alone. No, you leave the kids alone. Again, that's this was outside of McCallum High School in Austin, Texas, just on Friday. Kids were leaving school for the day, and they run into these guys. According to the Los Angeles Blade, a spokesperson for the Austin Independent School District said that the protesters initially blocked the buses that the students were trying to board to go home. The Austin Chronicle reported that the school staff had asked the protesters to move away so that the kids could go home, but they refused. At the end of the day, uh, the school's spokesperson said that the Austin ISD police officers were on site to ensure everyone's safety and the protesters left after about an hour. This next video also happened outside of an elementary school in North Hollywood, California. And I'm going to have to give you a content warning for this one. Uh, language and mention of suicide. You should have hanged yourself. You should have died in the f***ing closet. Hey, I got a big girl for you. I'll bet hang you hang yourself today. Ah, there's nothing quite like the people who claim to care about children telling people to go hang themselves. That's right. Especially telling queer children, trans children, gay children to go kill themselves. That's who we're dealing with. And yet, again, they're, they're the ones saying, leave our kids alone. No, no, no. How about you, you weirdos leave kids alone? Okay. That, that was during an optional Pride Assembly for students that included a reading of a children's book featuring same-sex families. Optional being the word here. Uh, it seems like to me that they're just afraid of kids even learning about the existence of gay and trans people. Not because if they learn about it, suddenly it makes your kid gay or trans. No, that's not what happens. It's never happened in the history of the entire freaking universe. Okay? You can't just gay or trans somebody by having them learn about it. No, what what... What they hate and what they want to prevent happening is their kid learning about it and challenging their hatred. That's the fear. They know that if they're challenged, hey, why should I hate this person that happens to be gay? My friend is gay. They're totally fine. They're a good person. Uh, they know that they're not going to have a good answer for it. They know that their ignorance and their hate is going to get called out and it's going to make them feel bad. It's going to make them look bad because it is bad. And they don't want to deal with it. They don't want to deal with somebody challenging everything that they learned from their church, their parents, the lies that they grew up with, uh, learning about LGBTQ plus people. And they're so afraid to admit that they've been wrong and ignorant and hateful the entire time. That's why they're so afraid of LGBTQ topics in school, because they're afraid of tolerance and they're afraid accept of acceptance and they're afraid that their hatred is no longer going to be welcomed and celebrated. That's all it comes down to.